Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today I'm gonna to take you, come on in the set. But we just did a two person interview and I already made a video on two person interviews, but I thought, you know what? This is a little different setup. I figured I may as well just show it. So come on in, We've got a little bigger crew on this one. We've got our main man, Justin, here he is. You guys remember Justin? He's a gaffer, extraordinary. He's also a really good DP, but he always gaffs with us. Oh yeah. He's also a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, so don't mess with him. Come on in, we're doing three cams on this one. You guys know Tommy, he's been in like a thousand videos. What up Tommy? So Tommy is one of the subjects for the interview. Come on in this way. Basically the setup for this one, it's a two person interview. They're talking to each other. Tommy's kind of interviewing our other guy, Chris. For this one, we did three cams. A cams right here, C500 Mark II, 35 mil lens. It's the Canon 35 1.4 version two. And we ran a teleprompter on this. One quick note about teleprompters. Oftentimes they'll kill about two thirds of a stop of light. So this particular teleprompter one, I think it's a 15 inch ICAN. I'll link it below, but it's a pretty good one. We like it. And then obviously got the bright tangerine cage, Cine 7 up top, love this setup. It's always great. Our B cam and C cam are basically identical. So. I'm gonna level with you guys. Bright Tangerine sometimes sends me stuff to test out. These particular C70 cages are so good. I have a video made on the, the rig build and all that stuff, but we literally bought two more because we love them. Full price, no discount, nothing. Uh, but they're amazing. So we love the C70 uh, rig builds right here. This is with the Bright Tangerine cage. And we're on a big dovetail. It helps counterbalance when you got a V-mount on the back. But I got a whole video on the breakdown of this particular setup, which I'll link below. This is just on a Dana dolly. So a couple notes about, um, I'm, I'm gonna insert some footage here, but basically when you're on the Dana dolly, it's really nice given just a little subtle movement. These are identical setups over here for our B cam and over there for our C cam. They're both on Canon 85 mil 1.4 version, uh, version, no, version one lenses. Uh, but these lenses are really nice. It's a really clean look. It doesn't have a lot of character and it's not vintage and doesn't flare all crazy, but that's exactly what we want for this particular piece. Uh, the heads we're on, this is a Sockler Ace uh, XL. Don't like it, don't get it. Uh, the other one over there is a, it's a Sockler head as well. But it's a similar setup over here. You got the bright tangerine cage and just like Atomo Shinobi monitors. And this, this guy right here and then the other guy over there are sending signals over to our monitor setup. So the monitor setup over here, if you want to swing around this way, we got three cams routed into the Sumo 19M. So there's two versions of this, Sumo 19 and Sumo 19M. I have the, the 19M. So, but anyways, I have to run a decimator. So it basically takes four signals right in here and it gives you this cool little multi-viewer. Little tip, I like to, on the multi-viewer, I like to keep all the OSDs on. So the on-screen displays, so you can see the volume, make sure you got scratch audio, making sure things are in focus, make sure, like I leaned over Rob, uh, who you guys know, Rob's the movie app, he was opping and you know, I was like, hey, a little less headroom, so uh, tilts down. Um, so anyways, that's a cool setup. And then over here, we got the laptop, uh, Cassie, who you guys have seen before, Cassie was running the teleprompter and she's just kind of running through different talking points. So let's talk about lighting. Uh, we've got kind of a cool setup. It's the same general idea. It's cross key lighting with a little bit of lift and fill that we talked about in the other two person video that I have on my channel, but I'll just run you guys through the setup. So up top, this is our key light. What this is, Aperture 600D, total overkill. We could have gotten by with a 300D, but this is like, it's a 20% output, it's not high. But it's just through like a, one of the regular Aperture lanterns. So here's what the lantern does. Okay, and then second light we got here is the Aperture 300D Mark II. It's just through a light dome mini. And we use what's called a baby nail on plate. So we literally take, it's like a, a baby pin with a plate on it and you drill holes into your wall. So don't do this at a location that you don't have permission to do that, but this is our studio, so we can do whatever we want. So we did that up there, and that's just because the, the light stand is getting in the shot, and we wanted the light stand out. And then our lantern's coming from, if you just zoom in up top, that's called a menace arm up there. And what that is, is just a big old arm, similar to like a Minimax, but it's basically so you can boom your light way in from way out of, out of the shot. And then we got our other hair light up here, hair light slash um, cross key light, which is another Aperture 300D, and that's through a 36 inch dome. Uh, one other thing that we haven't talked a ton about on the channel, let me come on over here, is backlights. So uh, oftentimes with backlights, if you have a gaffer and you have somebody else to help you with your stuff, it's a way you can add color contrast to your scene. So the scene is basically all daylight, and what I wanted to do is add some color on 
the cool end of the spectrum and the warm end of the spectrum. So these are novas right here, aperture novas. This guy's just kicking some warm spill into this sort of like vintage poster setup over here. It's kind of cool, I like it, warms it up. And then on the opposite side, we've got, this one's actually a light panel, it's Gemini two by one. It's just putting a nice blue on the wall. So you'll see in the, the single shots, which I'll put on screen right now, basically what it does is just create some color contrast and separation on the face. Generally for most of the shots, what I'm looking for is color contrast. So like cool and warm. I'm looking for depth and separation from the background. And I'm looking for contrast for, you want basically stuff that's in the highlight section and then stuff that's in the shadow section. You don't want it generally, I'll say you don't. I don't generally like it when it's basically all just like one color wash. Now, finally, the last section of, I guess we didn't really talk about the key. Uh, I guess we can talk about the key. Let's do that and we'll go back to the windows. Jumping over to our key, uh, sorry, well it's not really the key. This is our fill light, but this is just an eight by frame. This is a big complicated way to do it. It was already built, so this is why. All this is doing is giving a little bit of fill to the front of our subjects, and I'll off on that in the edit to show you what that does. But basically it's an Aperture 1200D at like literally 2%. Punch through some gel, which is warming it up a bit. Punch through some diffusion. Punch through some ultra bounce right here. Through an uh, eight by eight of muslin, which is basically uh, just like thick grid cloth. So, and then right here, it was spilling too much on the floor, so we skirted it off. So it's just, again, probably the most complicated way you could just add a little bit of fill light. I don't know that I would do it again that way if I were to do it, but it is what it is. So last section is over here. Talking about the windows, we're gonna go around because we don't want to put a bunch of footsteps there. Last section of the setup is we have these windows. And I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. You can actually kind of see what we did is we ND'd these windows. Can you kind of see where it's a little bit brighter on that section and then a little bit darker up here? I think it's either two stops or three stops of ND. And all it is is like you guys have seen like a car window tint basically. It's the same thing. It's just these big rolls of like tint basically. And they make it a different like two stops, three stops, four stops. And what I want to do with that is knock down the exposure of these windows so it's not like radically overexposed. So it's literally like more like, yeah, sure, it's, it's still very much at the brightest part of your waveform, but it's not, it doesn't look like nuclear, like you shot on like a Canon 5D from 1994. Like it looks more like, oh, okay. Basically gives your camera like two more stops of exposure in the highlights because you're knocking down the highlights, two stops. So let's see, I think that's it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Hopefully you like this video. If you like this kind of content, consider hitting that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one.